God body is simple. It means you see God when you look in the mirror and that the body of man is God and that there's no mystery God in the sky. You are God. Hey, what's going on, fam? Welcome to another episode of The Anabolic Mind, where we uh, talk to different people about uh, how they incorporate wellness into their lifestyles, wellness, health, and fitness on the professional end, and uh, how they manage it personally. Uh, and to hear inspiring story in between. And to that effect, we have an incredible guest today. She is an incredible vocalist. Uh, my buddy I, I met on Instagram. We actually trained and had a great connection. We have Naomi Atchu, the Queen of Baminda. Good to have you on here. Thanks for coming on. I know your schedule is busy, uh, touring, recording, and everything. So um, thank you so much. Let's get a little bit into your background. Um, tell us about yourself, how long you've been into music, and um, who are your musical inspirations? So, I mean, I like to think I've been singing all my life. I wrote my first song when I was about eight, nine. It's just this silly song called Smile, very age appropriate. Just smile from ear to ear. And it was, you know, I was vacuuming. Um, my inspirations were, uh, of course, everybody loves Michael. So Michael Jackson, right. uh, Whitney Houston. When I watched her sing The Greatest Love of All, I think it was, uh, was it at a concert? I was like, okay, I have to be a singer. I have to do something on the stage because her energy was just, you know, unmatchable. You can't match Whitney's energy. Wow. You know, you just, you, you yeah. can't. You know, it, it's Whitney. Um, so those are my inspirations. Yep. And then um, how long have you been professionally doing it? Like how long have you been really like, grinding on the music? Uh, well, I would say my first, I would say about 10 years. Wow. Because wow. that's when I released my first, my first single. Yeah, my first single came out like, yeah, 10 years ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yes. really excellent. So, yeah. I, I guess when you survived the first five years and you, you feel more comfortable in the music industry, how does that work? Um, I don't know if I feel like music is 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 a journey, mm -hmm. and I feel like I look at music and music, you know, uh, being an entertainer as a journey because the songs that you sing when you're eight are not the kind of songs that you sing when you're eighteen. They're not the songs that you sing when you're mm -hmm. twenty eight. Mm -hmm. You know, and I I use um, who can I use as as a perfect example or a very good example? Uh, I would say Mary J. Blige is a great example of someone who has grown with her music. Um, but I would say the confidence in self-expression is what you take with you as an entertainer over the years. Oh, that's, a, that's a great answer. Uh, I actually trained Mary, I guess, from 1999 to 2017. Long time. Yeah, she, I love her. I love so, her. Yeah, she definitely ha has evolved. Shout out, shout out to Mary. So let's talk about your health and wellness. So what were you doing fitness-wise when you first started your career as opposed to now? What is the biggest difference? 10 years ago as opposed to now? Uh, fitness wise, I, I like to think I was generally, generally more active because I was, um, I was in the clubs a lot. You know what I'm trying to say? Like I would go clubbing, mm -hmm. dance is a very good way to exercise, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I still like dancing, but now when I go to the club, it's usually because I'm hosting or I'm a VIP. So I don't get to really like dance as much as I used to when I was with my girlfriends. Right. So you're you saying, know, you're saying you, you have to now, if I'm understanding it right, you have to make a point of working out more now because yeah. it was more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and, uh, yes. Yeah. I think, I think that's for everybody too, because every, I think just uh, after post pandemic, we just more sedentary in general, people yes. sitting on the ass a little bit more. So you got to make yes. more of an effort to, you know, to get out there and, and, and get your body moving. Let's yes. talk about uh, diet-wise. How has your diet changed since uh, you started and since now? What do you think? Uh, let's see. Um, I think as an entertainer, I make an a, I make a, I make it a point to drink more water. Mm -hmm. um, and um, more this more water really. It, I would say how you know it's because I travel a lot now more than I did before. Um, yeah. and you know, I eat different foods. I taste different foods as I travel, but I do try to um, make it a point to drink my water, um, you know, and to eat more fruits. 
Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. you know, fruits is universal, water is universal. Right. Um, go to different countries, there's different types of bread, there's different types of pizza, there's different types of vegetables, but you, you can't go wrong with, um, your, you can't go wrong with lettuce, you can't go wrong with water, you know, you have that everywhere you go. Yeah, that's, that's true, that's true. So you kind of got to have the tour of healthy eating because you can't find everything everywhere you go, but there's certain staples you can always find something yeah. healthy to eat. Even at McDonald's, you can always find something healthy. You don't have to necessarily go to the worst because I've been on tour and only McDonald's been there before. <laughs> and been able to get something decent and squeeze something out, especially these days. They got the, uh, the vegan burgers in a lot of these fast food stores. So there's always. Oh, a yeah. There. You know what and I would they, usually, I usually rock with a protein shake and then go in there and get a salad. You know, this way I can stay on. Yeah. Food. And oatmeal. They got, they have oatmeal too. Yeah. Yeah. And they have oatmeal. So there's, there's definitely always alternatives. What do you, what's your working out looking like now? How many times a week are you getting it in? I would probably say I go for walks like two times a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So not as much as I want to. If I was like more stable, I'd probably be doing it, you know, three, four times a week. But I would say around now was probably like two, two times a week. All right. That's good. That's good. So you're getting it in on a regular. I got a question for you. And uh, I ask a lot of my uh, artist clients this question. I get a lot of different answers. The men. Well, I asked the question first. I'll give you the answer first. My opinion, my view on it. The men are always much more resentful. I'm going to give you the answer before I answer the question. But the women always seem to accept it more. So now the question is, uh, do you think, how do you feel fitness or your visual plays into your actual choice selection of music? Or do you feel limited? Because uh, you have to think video and song now. Like how is your process and how does your appearance factor into that? The women seem to accept it more because there's always been a bit of sexism. So they always had to deal with that. The men yes. are a little bit more resentful because they feel this new to them like you know i'm just you know why do i have to have a six-pack i'm doing the song you know a lot of rappers i talk to they got a different attitude what's your take on that everybody got everybody has to put in the work mark nobody mm -hmm. nobody should be left exempt and you know they want they want the women to look good they want right. the rest of, you know but then you expect come on now no it has to go across the board everybody has to make an effort um yes yes and and I, I, honestly, to me, uh, looking good is, of course, being healthy. Mm -hmm. I feel that the number one thing is to be to be healthy with it, to be happy within yourself. That's number one. Right. And, uh, number two, to eat healthy. Number three is um, what else? To work out, right? Um, it's not always, you don't have to be uh, a size four to, to, to look your best. You know, you don't have to, you know, because some people I hear this. This is what a lot of ladies say, a lot of girls. Oh, well, you know, I've natural, I'm naturally curvy. I've always been big. I've always been big. And, you know, some people, I guess, have it, I guess, to my understanding, I guess it is what it is, if that's what they're saying. But they find a way to still be healthy. They find a way to still be happy. Right. They find a way to still work out. Mm -hmm. You know, they find a way to still lose 10 pounds. You know, right. Um, so I think it's all about making that conscious effort. Yeah, I, I agree. And 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 the men are, are definitely lagging behind professionally. You know, it's like well, we were talking about Mary, for example. And I was like, you know, like Mary really, she has not been out of shape since 2000. And it's like 2022. Like it'd be, you'd be hard pressed to catch her in a video or a picture really looking crazy. And I would ask her, I'm like, damn, Mary, you know, even when you're on vacation, you'll have me out there with you. You know what I'm saying? She's like, listen, I'm a woman. I'm not like these guys. I can't go on stage yes. looking, looking crazy and, and, and still selling records. It's a good amount of sexism. And, and I think the men are a little resentful because it's starting to feel that. But just a little bit, not even to the extent women do, not even close. But the men are starting to feel that. And it might be for the better because it might improve the overall health, you know, maybe. Because it's been like that. It's been like that since 600 years ago, Mark, when, um, you know, if you go into the throne, if you go into the, 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 the throne of England and you look at the fashion that they had in those times, you see that the dresses had the dresses had these corsets that you had to pull in the back. Right. You know, it would, you know, pull those strings. And it was almost like the tiniest waist was the one who got the most attention. Right. So this 
this is how it's always been, you know, for many, many years. So to us, it's like, yeah, we know, we know, we know. So we just go with the flow. And then another thing is that we're very, uh, women are very, um, how can I say, we're very competitive of ourselves, mm. you know, mm-hmm. more so. We, 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 I think we, we impress ourselves work on impressing ourselves more than we, 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 we work on impressing the guys. Ah, uh, so, yeah, I agree. I think so. I think you're right on that one. Yes, because you know, you see a lot of guys, and they'll tell you, No, I don't really need a woman to with too much makeup. I don't yeah, I don't care. Yeah, none of my friends care about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they just a lot of them just want somebody who's confident, right? Who takes care of themselves. Not we're not saying that you should just let yourself go, mm-hmm. but some confident, someone who's clean, and someone who takes care of themselves, um, you know, averagely, you know, right. but we're want to be like the who want to look the best so there's that there's that pressure but guys are guys may have that but not as much no, you know no. guys competitive amongst themselves I, i'm thinking with guys it's more about who's richer or who's yeah you know, guys with, who's got the bigger car that's the car flex there you it's, go yeah, yeah 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 it's more of a car money flex you got that right you absolutely hit that on the yeah. head you know yeah but however i do think it's getting better uh for the women because now you see women of uh, all types of sizes uh, oh, performing yeah. on TV doing music that you never saw before. Before it was very limited to the uh, type of size you want to do. And, uh, you know, even um, with uh, with my clients, you know, I've definitely seen a change. Like, I want to, it went from a couple years, I don't want to have any ass to Mark, I want to have a stripper ass. What can you do? To now, <laughs> I want to be thick. Yeah, it's, it's the body type to what's sexy and what's marketable has definitely changed. And I, th- I think it's more inclusionary now. However, I do think that because of uh, the pandemic, you know, obesity is a pre-existing condition. So you want to oh. look, you want to look sexy, but at the same time, you don't want to, you know, be sexy to the point where it's negatively impacting your health. So I always put that message out there. Wellness comes yeah. in all types of different sizes. You know, I certainly am not, I'm not into the skinny. None of my athlete friends are into skinny women. It's interesting. Very few of them. You know what I mean? But yeah, because you know, you're we're big ourselves. So you don't want to make a fire. Too many cuts. Too many. <laughs> You might burn the bed down. So we always look up a little uh, cushion, I think, the bigger guys. But I think that uh, it's important to recognize that you can be healthy any size you're in. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, body positivity all the way. Um, yeah, pretty much. But, yeah, we're, we're used to it, Mark. We're used to mm-hmm. we're, That's interesting. Them. Yeah, that's because guys are totally not used to that. Because, you know, a lot of times I'll have the management uh, call me as opposed to the artist. So when I meet the guy, he's got a lot of resentment. Like, shit, I don't even want to do this in the first place. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, it, it, it's funny where um, with the females, they're always like, yeah, man, I want to get in shape anyway. It's a whole, yeah. different, it's a whole different vibration and, and, and energy. That's interesting. So what are your, yeah. you got any long-term um, fitness goals? Would you like to run a marathon, perhaps? Or uh, Ironman, uh, uh, MMA? What's your, what's your goal? What's your fitness goal? My sister does that. She runs the marathons, and I just clap for her. That's not oh, wow. me. That's me. Yeah, <laughs> my big wow. sister. She, she runs marathons. She gets on the newspapers for that. So no, that's 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 all her. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> I do want to tone. Mm-hmm. I do want to stay toned. I do want to stay ready for the stage. So um, I just want to constantly be ready. So I would say losing a couple of pounds, 15, 20 pounds is good, and then toning up, being fit. Um, yeah, those are my goals, really. Just really toning up and keeping it tight. What's your, um, do you meditate, a prayer, any type of, what else do you put into your, uh, into your wellness regime? You visualize every morning, what else do you do? Uh, prayer, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, prayer, uh, words of affirmation, you know, um, those two, I would say at the top. That's good. That's good. Very important to get some type of visualization or affirmation. I was very bad. I was doing the prayer, but I wasn't doing the visualization. I would fall asleep. <laughs> and then wake up like I didn't, you know what I mean? Instead of, instead of doing it. So I got an app. I actually got an app. And I put the app on and I do the visualization. So it keeps me yeah. awake. It's, it's talking to me because I fall asleep during the yeah. meditation or sleep sometimes. Um, yes, yes. What was else was I gonna ask you about? Uh, oh, what uh, what do you have to say to the aspiring artist out there, female artist who wants to get in shape or who maybe is not in great shape or who perhaps feels like her uh, appearance is holding her back? You know, what do you have to say to her? I would say love yourself first. That's number one. 
And when I, when I go on the, when I go on my diets, mm -hmm. this is so crazy, but it's really a mindset. It's like an on button and an off button. So I just tell myself food does not exist. Mm. And it literally does not. <laughs> and you can do it, huh? You can put, you can put like a big, you could put a big rock lobster in front of me and it would not exist. Wow. You can put, no, you can put like the best sandwich, the best ham sandwich, whatever, cheeseburger in front of me and it would not exist at that point. When I, when I, um, when I frame my mind to know that I'm on a mission. Right. And then um, I would always say, think of yourself at the end of the, at the end of the tunnel. So let's say this person is trying to lose like maybe 50 pounds, for example. Mm -hmm. I would say envision that person that you will be when you lose that 50 pounds. Right. And that's be your motivation because you get up in the morning and you're like, wow, if I can look like this person, I will feel so much different and things will change in my life. Very good. Very good. Yeah, good. so it's, it's kind of like if you want a Lamborghini, Mm -hmm. You have to put, you have to put that Lamborghini in your head. So if you walk past a dealership every day looking at that Lamborghini, you're going to work towards what you need to do to get to that Lamborghini. I feel you on that one. You got to definitely put the message out there, visualize it, and uh, you know, uh, and, and you have to feel it when you're visualizing. Yes. They say yes. to not to even remember what you um, not to think so much of what you're visualizing, but to remember the feeling because the feeling is yes. powerful. You feel. Yes. Um, what's your favorite exercise? Uh, my favorite exercise. Do I have a favorite? I don't know. <laughs> what's your exercise. What's your least favorite? What's your What's your least favorite? Which one do you hate the most? Those arm thingies, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Those push ups. <laughs> the upper body stuff. But you know that's true. You're good on the legs. You're strong on the legs. Your yes. legs are strong. Your upper body. But most women. Uh, the upper body is a lot weaker than the legs, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, I remember you definitely didn't like the upper body stuff too much. Yes. What about, no. what, what, what about cardio? Does that help you? Does, does the training help you with your singing and dancing on stage, your stage performance? How, how important okay. is cardio work? No, of course. I think cardio is the best because you know if you have to if you have to perform for forty minutes, not only are you singing, but you're also dancing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it definitely helps you with your stamina. I would say cardio is number one. Okay. Wow. Good answer. Good answer. Interesting. Yeah. I hear a lot of mm -hmm. artists. Say, a lot of artists do say that. Um, but you know what I find too, that the uh, artists, uh, when they do get in shape, they're in so much better cardiovascular condition than the average person because they know how to use their diaphragm better. Most people yeah. don't know how to use the diaphragm because you guys sing, you're used to that diaphragmic breathing. It works a lot better. So that's yeah. always interesting. And and the, the timing with you guys with boxing and stuff like that is always better because you understand rhythm and timing in the yeah. so it's always it's always fun to train uh, artists. Um yeah, sure. What is your um let's see, uh we got the cardio, we got the um what's your favorite body part on you? My favorite body part. Um it can be anything, right? Yeah, it can be anything. My favorite body part would be my lips. Okay, and why you put your lips? Not too, not too thick, not too skinny. It don't need nothing. It's perfect. I <laughs> just right. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> what? So, do you have a what kind of guy do you like? Are you into guys who work out? Like, do you have a criteria? Will you date a super guy, or are you looking for six packs? What do you, what do, what do you like? Um, I like well body type. I'm not too crazy about body type per se. Of course, somebody who works out and takes care of themselves you know, would, would make life easier. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? So definitely somebody who works out, takes care of themselves. I'm not going to say, okay, well, because you're, you're fat, you know, I don't, I'm not going to talk to you. No. Um, uh, I think a sense of humor is good. Guys with a sense of humor. Um, I like smart guys too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, guys who can hold like really, you know, forward thinking conversations, definitely a plus. But I also like to be around somebody that can empower me. Mm. So if I'm around someone that works out, then I'm also empowered to work out, you know, or who's eating healthy. I'm, I'm empowered to eat healthy. So, yeah, that type of person. Forward thinking. Gotcha. What's your, what's your favorite? What's your, I, and, I, and I agree. Like, you know, for me, 
it doesn't matter. And I, that's why I feel so blessed to be a trainer because, you know, I can go for the personality because I can always transform them anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you want to yeah. So I always try to look for a great personality. I'm not so much into what you look like initially, you know, because uh, yeah, that, that phase is, it, it, it is what's inside. I like a good sense of humor too. Somebody's not too serious. Very, yes. very, very important. All right. And um, what is your favorite junk food? Ooh, I like them all, Mark. <laughs> me, me too. I just don't eat them. <laughs> I like them all, though. I do like them all. That's a good response. Um, I like, what do I like? Um, okay, I like anything cheese. I love, okay, you said, you said, did you say fast food? Any junk food, anything you like. What's your favorite? What's your favorite? <laughs> Lasagna is not really a junk food. I'll take a, okay, so if I was well, to go with- The way my mom makes it, it's definitely a junk food. Is, would you consider beef patty a junk food? Hey, you know, we used to eat the beef patty in Brooklyn. Yo, but the bread, the cocoa bread was used to be this thick. <laughs> <laughs> right off Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn. That was definitely a junk, anything that takes you uh, and it's bread and takes you over 30 minutes to eat, that's junk food. <laughs> I, I <laughs> love it. Spicy beef patty oh, yeah, with oh, the yeah. cocoa bread, and then they have the drink. What's it called? The um, the ginger drink at the not, the, the, not the ting, but the uh, uh, ginger, uh, ginger beer. The ginger beer, yeah, the yeah, ginger yeah, beer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So good. That's all me. Well, you know that's how I got fat in the first place. I started out in fitness with a forty-five inch waist. My family's out. I'm from Antigua, so I'm not <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's how I, too much beef patty, too much beef patty, and uh, too much roti. <laughs> by 17, um, by 17, I had a 45 inch waist. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. High school. And, I was, and I was introduced to beef patty, cocoa bread, and meatloaf when I was in England because, you know, there's so many Jamaicans Jamaica, right. from the islands in England, in London. And uh, my mom had a, a, a neighbor who was always giving her, like, beef patties and meatloaf and the and she would bring it home and I would be I would just you know be all up in the fridge eating. <laughs> yeah. I guess yeah. that's the Indian hamburger, right? It'd be like the same type of thing. Yeah. More, more carbs because you got the bread in for the beef patty and then you got the bread on top of it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good old day. I'm getting hungry I'm getting hungry thinking I haven't eaten beef patty in a long time. It's been years. You know, I'm going to say this, and, you know, Cali people are going to jump at me, but California does not have... No, no, not the same. Not the same on the West Indian. <laughs> no, no. I, don't, I don't bother here. But I have heard there are some good places, you know, but I haven't, I have not personally ate some places where I felt like I was eating West Indian food. West Indian food in California is, it's, mm -mm. Yeah, it's New not, York. New, New York. New York is very sad. Um, Maryland a little bit, but New York, I would say New York takes the takes the takes the award for you know island hey, food if you really want to do it you can, you can come to my mom's house but i gotta be a cheat there you gotta be ready to gain 10 pounds okay <laughs> you okay gotta, so we you go to my mom yeah if you really want to do it we can go to my mom's house okay so i'll come during the cookout invite me for the cookout at least that's gonna be a cheat day am i allowed to cheat on a cookout day yeah, like we, a... Both, we both have a cheat day because if i don't eat in front of my mother she's gonna get mad so <laughs> okay <laughs> you, you, are, you already know <laughs> Hey, Naomi, it was great to have you on. You want to close anything for the females working out? Give them some inspiration before we sign out and uh, tell them where uh, they can get at you on Instagram and all that. Um, hey, everybody, it's your girl Naomi at you. I'm here with Mark Jenkins or the Anabolic Mind, and I want you to follow me on Instagram. I am Naomi at you on Facebook, Naomi at you, Twitter, everywhere. I have uh, some amazing music for a workout. Uh, you can check out Pepper Them in my album. Um, you can uh, check it out on Spotify, iTunes, everywhere. Let's connect, uh, stay positive, and remember. A nice playlist is a great thing to go to uh, when you are working out. Yep, yep. And I'm definitely going to get my next jump rope segment. I'm going to get, I'm gonna get some music on there so people can really get a feel for how incredible your music is. So, Naomi, thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, of course. Thank you for being on. It was a pleasure. And I'm going to see you when you get back into L.A. We're going to... Yeah. All right. I'm going to close out, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tune in to the next episode and make sure you stay healthy. Peace and love, fam. You hang on. I'm coming right back.